Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also going to let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. People may not be familiar with your story. Uh, they may not know how this all came together. And I think for the new folks, it might be really beautiful to kind of take people through what the Healing Frequency Music Project is and how it all got started. Sure. Well, in a, in a nutshell, the Healing Frequency Music Project um, started out with a group of frequencies that I had been working with that I felt that uh, had a profound effect on humanity um, and that were, a couple thousand years ago, part of a musical system in Israel and then had disappeared and nobody really seemed to know what happened to the music. And through a lot of research, 17 plus years to, to be exact, once I was able to unearth the frequencies, the next part was finding a way to create music, Darius, that would complement those frequencies so that when people would listen to it, that not only would they enjoy the music, but the medicine in the music would be the frequency in embedded itself. And so my whole takeaway from this was I wanted the music to be the spoonful of sugar that helped the frequency or the medicine go down. And um, yeah. it was really amazing. I had all these ideas, you know, it's bizarre, especially when you're a kid and you know there's something wrong with music and people look at you like you're nuts, you know, and they think, what do you mean there's something wrong with music? I said, I can't put my finger on it. This is like when I was just a kid. I said, there's something mm. wrong with music. I don't know what it is because it's beautiful and I'm a musician and I'll always be a musician, but there's something inherently wrong with what I'm hearing. And I didn't know for many, many, many years what I was talking about until I went to Israel and, uh, a good friend of mine, Don Finto, who was a pastor at that time in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and I took a trip to Israel, and it was the most bizarre, clandestine, spiritually just out-of-the-park experience because my first question when we landed in Ben-Gurion was, Don, should we get a GPS, you know, so we know where we're going? And he said, no, mm -hmm. Michael, heavens, no. We already know where we're going because God knows we're here. And I was like, what? Then he said, um, I feel like we're supposed to go to this coffee house that's in downtown uh, Jerusalem on Ben Yehuda Street. And he said, and a friend of mine will probably meet us there. I feel it. And I said, well, d did you call him? Does he know we're coming? And he goes, oh, he doesn't even know we're in Israel. And I'm thinking, I love this man's faith, and I love the electricity of a journey where you don't have everything kind of um, premeditated. Yeah. You just, you know. Yes. And so anyway, I, w I did what he felt because I wasn't really feeling much of anything except tired after a long flight. And um, so he was driving into Jerusalem, and he said, stop the car over there. We're going to go to this coffee house. So we went in the coffee house, and as soon as I got in the front door, I heard this guy playing piano, and I loved the music. I just, mm -hmm. But then there was something hauntingly familiar about the music. And when I sat down and looked up at the stage, it was just one guy playing piano, and he was staring at me like, crazy staring at me, like staring a hole in the back of my head staring. And so, you know, I, I looked at him as long as I could, and he was like smiling and giggling, and I was like, that's a little awkward. So I just closed my eyes and listened to the music, and I thought, I know these songs. These are familiar songs. And so during the break, the guy came over to the table, and he said, hi, um, I think you're a believer. And I said, I am. And he goes, that's why I was giggling. He said, I could see just light mm. coming off of you. And I said, oh, wow. And he said, well, he said, this is going to sound crazy, but can you stay around for a while? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And we're waiting on somebody. And he said, well, he goes, I woke up this morning and God told me that I was supposed to give someone my life, life's work. And I said, what's your life's work? And he said, decoding the Psalms of, of King David, all of them, and 
putting them yeah. into a you know a scalar musical form. And I said, "What's your name?" And he said, "David." And I went, oh, "Of course it is." So, uh, long story short, I I stayed there, Darius, for another set of his music. And while we were sitting there, this man that my you know friend Don said would show up shows up and walks into the coffee house and freaks mm-hmm. out when he sees Don and they hug each other and. I'm thinking this is just really cool. And then this guy David goes, I got to go out to my car and get some stuff. And he comes back to the table with two sets of manuscripts. One of them was Advent Guard Notation, and the other one was Tablature. For your listeners, Tablature is just like what you see in a music book or in a piano book, you know, just basically charts and chord charts. And um, so I was just stupefied. And he said, You know, Yeshua said, I've, sh- I've taken this as far as I can take it. Now it's up to you. And he hands me all of his work and hugs me. And I kissed him on the cheek and was crying. And that was that. We took off and I took off with all of this music. And for some time, didn't have a clue what it was about. When I got back to the States, I messed around with it a little bit. And to be quite honest, I stuck it in a file cabinet for about two years. And um, two years later, one day I was had this you know it's funny how things work like that i mean we've you and i have talked about this stuff but you have like this lucid moment where you go oh yeah there is music in my file cabinet and then there's a question and the question that comes in your mind is probably the qualifier and the qualifier was i wonder what's on page 222 in the bible now that's a pretty random question and So I looked in my particular translation, and in my head I'm thinking, if there's something about David, I'm going to flip out, because this whole Mm. thing started in Israel, and all started with David and the Psalms, and I didn't really have a clue what was happening. And next thing I know, I look in the Bible, and it's a a, a geological reference to David. And I'm like, okay, I'm not 220, no. And it was like that moment, like when you finish a Rubik's Cube, and you look around all the sides and all the colors, line up and you go I did it I did it it was like that you know it's a beautiful it's a beautiful mind moment where where you just go oh my god no it can't it can't I was weeping it can't be this easy double it 444 equals a a 440 no it can't be 444 hertz it can't be this Mm -hmm. easy and it was and that was the beginning of um the the big shift um in music to changing the tuning center of music just four cents but um, as you've come to know, and I've known for some time, it makes all the difference. And let's talk about that because 440 to sure. 444. For some people, they may say, "Okay, that sounds great. I liked it. You know, all the numbers. Mm-hmm. There's three fours there. That sounds harmonious, right?" <laughs> but, but what does it really mean? Like, what's yeah. what's important about that? Great. Well, the first thing is when we talk about hertz, you know, we're talking about vibrations per second. So if we say, for example, Darius 440 equals the note A when it vibrates at 440 hertz or 440 times a second. Now, Mm. so the difference between something vibrating 440 times versus 444 times, the the human mind goes, what's the diff? Big deal, right? Oh, my. It's in between that four cents is a whole nother world. It's like Horton hears a who. <laughs> it's like mm. it's a whole nother <laughs> space, man. And so when yeah. people start to understand how sensitive frequencies is, it's it's like this. It's like back in the day, those of us that are past forty, and we had our analog FM radio, and we'd be listening to our favorite, you know, whoever it was then, Tom Petty, who knows, and um, and our elbow hits that digital. I mean that um that analog, you know, knob, and all of a sudden it goes from that's 96 rock to, and you yeah. go, where's my music? And really, all yeah. you did was knock that off one, like zero zero point one percent of of wow. one cent. So, in other words, we're talking four cents here. So, in, in the human body, four cents of frequency could be the difference from the ball of your feet to the top of your head. So we're talking a giant real estate here of difference, and especially on a cellular level, Darius, how something that's dialed in um, four cents higher can make the difference between becoming um, chaotic to the cells or chaotic to the the mechanism of, of humanity versus um, centering it and adjusting it, if I could be so bold, or calibrating it properly to the way we were originally created by the master. Yes. Well, we are going to be plugging into this and, and understanding it. And I know we've talked in the past about when it changed, maybe why it changed, uh-huh. and we, we may leave that for today. Maybe we can talk about to- that towards the end. But you've seen some incredible stories with the 
different hertz frequencies <laughs> and the whole tone discoveries. And we're going to be taking it to another level today because we're going to add another yes. dimension to it. But I'd, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about a story that hit close to home with you, your mom, mm-hmm. and some of the other things that you've experienced. And then we're going to mm-hmm. add another layer to this for everyone. But tell us what happened. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, obviously – for, and there's a bunch of them listening right now because I can feel it. A mom is a mom forever to their children, and a mother would do anything for their children, and the children know that. And in that, um, besides the sense of security that they bring to the home and the love that they foster in our hearts, um, I was extremely close to my mother because I did not have a strong father figure. And so um, in 2005, Darius, there was just a, it was like the year where everything seemed like you know like it was falling apart we had a horrendous hurricane and it took part of the you know part of the roof off and did damage to the house at the same time the guy i had been working with for 3 years on the road we just we didn't have a falling out it was just we both kind of realized that the season was over it wasn't negative it was just like well we rode that thing now we got to <laughs> so no job <laughs> no roof and then i get a call that my mother has been diagnosed with some kind of mass on her pancreas and i'm just like I, I can't explain how I felt, but just like all the blood ran out of my face, and and I'm like, okay, I got to figure out how to repair a roof because there's not a guy within 12 months that's going to be able to help because everybody's lost it and everyone's blue tarped and and I don't have a job. But besides that, the most important thing is I got to get in my car and pack up my wife and my dog and we need to go to St. Pete because my mom's in trouble. And so by the time I got there, the whole story in a nutshell was that that she had been having some pain and the doctor did you know. Uh, biopsies and different things and and examinations and found that there was some kind of a growth on her pancreas and the doctor that uh, called me in to speak with him was one of the kindest most beautiful people I've ever met I mean just the opposite of what you would expect from from a very cerebral you know surgeon he said listen he said this is a very difficult surgery he said it will take me roughly between four and six hours to do this and I will be removing all of your mother's intestines into a pan and then praying that I can get them all back in properly so she Mm. can go to the bathroom again he goes this is huge and he said but having anything on the pancreas Michael is 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 an extremely rough prognosis so I'm not going to I'm not going to blow any smoke here I'm telling you the way it is but I'm also going to tell you this and he said, I treat them, but God heals them, and that's how it works. And I just started crying. I never heard anybody talk to me like that before. And so, um, you know, the whole drill, she was, you know, all prepped and ready for surgery, and we were, you know, we were hanging out there. And then all of a sudden, uh, another spinoff from that storm came and took all the power out in St. Pete. And so because of the duration of that surgery, they weren't about to do it on generator, and so they, they sent her home. So she was prepped for surgery, so like she put her clothes back on, we all went back to the apartment mm. and I'm just sitting here just kinda of thinking, What's going on? What why is all this happening? What's the bigger what's the bigger picture? And I didn't know. So I brought my guitar and I said, Hey mom, I'm gonna try something. I just I just wanna play my guitar over you. I'm gonna to touch you with the headstock of my guitar. It's kinda of hard for me to even tell uh you guys, even though you're my friend, it's just such an emotional thing. And uh and and she said, honey, I don't care how you play the guitar. I'll listen to you play guitar however you want to do it. You can put it on me. You can do whatever you want to do. And so mm-hmm. I started playing the guitar, and I put the headstock of the guitar in, in the vicinity of where my mother's pancreas would be. And she's not a – she's a beautiful person, but she's not, you know, she wouldn't do something as a courtesy. And all of a sudden she got very emotional. She said, something inside me is changing. It's turning green. Everything's green. I'm seeing life inside of me. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. And so I just kept playing and thought, man, this is awesome. I hoped something would happen. And so long story short, next day she goes into the hospital, you know, and they give us the whole story about how it's going to work. We're in the waiting room, you know, and the nurse was cool. And she said, look, you know, um, the way it'll work is you guys just sit in here in probably about four to six hours, you know, you'll hear the beeper go off. And when the beeper goes off, that means the doctor's about 15 minutes away from, you know, coming in and telling you how everything went and whatever. So just watch TV and it's, you're going to be here a while. And so, okay. So we're in there and, and, you know, different members of the family there, we're sitting in there and about 45 minutes goes by and the beeper goes off. And one of the people in the room said, oh, my God, there was so much cancer that they're just closing her up and sending her home to die. And I stood up and I went, oh, my God, she's healed. Two totally different responses to the same beeper. You know, it was like I saw it as, oh, my God, I I get to live longer with my mom. 
And sure enough, 15 minutes, Dr. Ranke comes out, uh, you know, of surgery, and he's beaming. I mean, he looks like he took 15 minutes for a suntan. The guy was glowing. I'm not even kidding. Mm-hmm. He came out and he goes, no cancer. Threw his hands mm-hmm. up there, no cancer. And I'm like, wow. I, I hit the ground. I didn't even, I, I didn't have yeah. legs, man, when he said those words, no cancer. And then he said, yeah. he said, but her gallbladder was really nasty. So I took that out. And that's what took 45 minutes. And my mom today <laughs> is still banging a golf ball. She's leaving for Colorado in a few days to go hiking with my sister. And she's in her 70s. And uh, I'm a wow. thankful guy. Hello and welcome, this is Darius Barzani, host of the Wealth Revolution, and if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're going to get access not only to a free gift that's going to double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also going to get to be a part of the U.S. Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now daily where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're gonna get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, you'll even get to be one-on-one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join, and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you like to see more of it, Click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.